Good morning, good morning lovely people. Uh, I hope you're doing well on this um, blowy Tuesday, the 5th of May 2020. This is your Yoga Solutions Live and I'm Mark J. Aquaviva of the Aquaviva Method. <laughs> yes, I hope, you're, I hope you're doing well wherever you are. I hope you're having a nice time or making the most of this time at least. Um, Yes, I, I am. Um, uh, yeah, what to say? Uh, well, the f first thing, I'm, I'm excited. My, my Pranayama course is up and running, so um, I don't normally do a promo at the beginning, but um, if you've been waiting to um, do my Pranayama course, it's, it's uh, an online course, it's up and running, it's half price for one month. Um, so um, it's a pretty comprehensive course, even if I say so myself. It's, um, yes. Um, <coughs> but apart from that, um, hang on a minute, I'm just, uh, need to look at Facebook to make sure this is working. Hang on. Uh, let's see. Just want to check. Because it's looking a bit static. Um, let me see. Anything going on? So the internet's been a bit funny recently. I'm not sure whether it's all the 5G stuff, but uh, uh, here we are. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm there, so that's <laughs> okay. So, yes. Um, okay, what to say? Um, I had something to say, and I can't remember what it was. Uh, doesn't matter. Apart, yeah, apart from my <laughs> Friday Alma course, it was that was about it, really. Oh yes, no, it's it's uh, <laughs> it's my birthday next Saturday. And that, that's, uh, that's kind of why I'm celebrating it, by offering my course out for half price. And uh, I'm going to be 59, I can't believe it, ne nearly hit 60. And uh, the reason I'm telling you that is because um, last weekend, um, on Saturday I had a half day workshop. And then in the afternoon I built this arch, I don't know if you can see it behind me there, um, I'm pointing at it now. It's that arch there across the um, steps that go up into my garden and uh, the week before I did the trellis and it's to grow stuff over it and to create a nice sort of privacy screen between me and my tenants and um, and uh, yes it's uh, that was on Saturday on Sunday I built a bloody pond <laughs> in Abigail's garden it, and it's massive it's a it's a three meters by two and it's a, a, a meter deep pretty much most of it and um, back-breaking work but um, I, there was something in my something that's happened in my spine recently where I've come together in the spine behind the heart like I'm always talking about and um, and there was a power to what I was doing that um, was phenomenal. I, fe I, I felt superhuman. I was, I was lift there was a half a brick wall with about 15 bricks and a load of cement on it that, that fell down into the hole. Um, and I, I picked it up <laughs> and put it in place. Um, I was a bit tired the following day. So, um, yeah, I was a, I was a bit... Um, but, but I wasn't physically in any kind of difficulty at all. And um, I was just marveling, that, that day I was marveling at um, how much energy I've got these days. And the older I get, the more energy I seem to have. And I, I don't know, it, uh, I, I've, got, um, I, I've got to put, at least put it down partly to my yoga. Because uh, uh, I was kind of practicing um, whilst I was doing it, as in I was working out the how to get support going through my bones and my joints and uh, so I didn't have my back and uh, obviously I'm, I'm digging away and my back is working but um, I swapped sides, I became a bit ambidextrous with it um, and it was a bit slower when I was left-handed but um, 
yeah, it was great. And um, yeah, so it's at least in part to do with my yoga. I, I think the, the other part of it is um, uh, I'm really loving living with my partner. And um, we've got an amazing symbiosis going on. So I'm, I'm just being fed energy from all directions, energy and love. It's amazing. So I, I'm, qu I'm really quite happy at the moment. Um, yes, and I'm nearly 60. How cool is that? So long might develop in that direction. Um, now, if I if I get to seventy and I'm digging two ponds in a weekend, then <laughs> then uh, I think that would be proof positive that this stuff works. But um, yeah, we, we we need all the conditions. I think you know we need. I've got I've got shelter. I've got good food. Abigail's an amazing cook, and she's baking her own bread and everything. Um, so and um, I've got love in my life, and um, I'm following my life path. And uh, the, these are all conditions, I think, that um, lead to an integrated human being. But um, it all started with me looking after my body uh, to find out who I was and um, what I actually wanted. And uh, that's something that happens for people when they come and work with me, I like to think. It's, uh, it's quite um, it's an intensive process. I think most people that have worked with me any, for any time will corroborate that um, in that it sort of brings you in touch with what you really want who you really are and um, when you when it's a dangerous thing to do because um, if you're in a situation where you don't like you know you're not in tune with your life then uh, getting in touch with that fact is um, going to lead to change uh, you, you'll be motivated to do something about it. And uh, I'm reminded of a post um, my mate Carl put up the other day, Carl from Stretch in London. He was, he was talking about it feels like it's time to get real, you know? And uh, this is something I've been saying as well. It's um, this change in the world. Uh, there, there seems to be um, an openness to what, what's, what's actually going on in the world here, you know? Um, and uh, yes, yeah, something about survival mode that bring that brings the best out of people, and um, yeah, that suits me down to the ground because I've, I've kind of been on that tip for a, you know what, what is what what's actually what's reality, you know, not not how do I survive, what's reality, and um, I've been on that tip for a while now, and uh, yes, it feels like the <laughs> the, the world is. Um, of a similar mind currently. So, anyway, that's me. Questions. I had a fabulous question from uh, Mark Hughes. He's a long-term student. He's been working with me for years. Lovely bloke. He's, um, he's a cabbie. He's, a, uh, <laughs> he's uh, climbing up the walls at the moment a bit because, um, uh, of course, he can't, he can't work. But um, uh, His question was, how are you guided from within and how how that shapes your practice and I thought that was a fabulous question um, it's it, it gets right down to the root of um, what we're practicing for how you are guided from within and that, that that's a it's a big question because when we um, when we go into practice you know, the, it's a strange thing to do, you know, um, as in going in to feel what's going on in our bodies is a strange thing to do on an um, on a, um, animal level. Because on, on that basic level, the only time you would do that would be if there was an injury or something going wrong. And um, so when, when we... When we go into our bodies, uh, as practices we get into it, there is an element of um, interpreting the sensations in order to check whether it's good or bad, whether it's right or wrong, whether we are well or dysfunctional, you know. And that, that act by itself creates a separation. So if you get a sensation in your body and, and you look at it from the intellect, <laughs> you immediately separate yourself from it. And if you're interpreting as well, then all the ideas, all the external ideas that um, you accumulated over your life become 
the background and the filter to that interpretation. And it, it becomes incredibly complicated um, because it's, it's rife with misinterpretation based on these external influences. So how are you guided with, from within? I mean, you know, we have to go there um, in order to make any kind of, um, get any kind of discernment in our practice. But how do you do that well? Um, and this is the whole practice of yoga because um, the, the idea is if you, if, um, if you get it right, as in if you're looking or noticing or being with something within yourself and you see a disturbance, if you, if you get it right, as in if you find a, uh, a better relationship, then the, the healing is, can be instant, you know, like that. Um, because it'll be a sim the simplest of things, a movement of two parts of yourself to give that place space, or a movement of two parts of yourself to come together through that place, so there, there is support. Um, that, uh, and then there's the question of how to, and um, you know that's where they, you know, using your touch and other things comes in. But um, yeah, how how are you guided from within? You know, it's an um, interesting question, and I think we're going to get practicing to see if I can help. So, um, so if you if if you don't mind joining me, uh, let, let let's uh, do something relatively neutral as in lying down because um, the the current you know the uh, the way we feel about our what's going on in ourselves is going to be entirely determined by how we breathe and how we are supporting ourselves and so probably the best thing you can do to tune into um, within whatever 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 within is is to um, take yourself away from external influence and, and you know this is the um, pratihara principle of yoga practice and it's considered as withdrawal from senses I sort of I, I sort of get the intent but if you withdraw from your senses and that's all you do all you're left with is the thinking mind and, um, and that is going to be um, a source of confusion. So, what we can do is take out the complication of holding yourself up by lying down, and if you organise things so that the you, you're actually supported by your touch, so the feet underneath the knees, active feet, so that you get some support from them, and uh, when you replace the heels, you can also replace the pelvis a bit closer to you so that um, the spine is more together, less pulled apart. These, these are all physical conditions that can help you find out what's going on in the middle because at other times you'll be feeling the external influence of weight and other things. So we are in space if we're, if we're conscious, if we're if we have ideas, we're, we're kind of in external influence. So take a breath, take a breath where you are, which is in space. As in occupying the space that you're in, be with that before you do anything. And then when you release the breath, release it to your center. And there's a literal deflation of the lungs that brings you towards your heart. So take a breath in space, and when you let it go, drop, drop into your heart, and drop effort at the same time. And it might take a few breaths to get there. So every inhale, every time the breath arrives, so you have to begin listening to the breath, and this is a start, because if you're listening to the breath, you're kind of listening to how you feel. So you take a breath in space and you release it to your center.
And you do that several times. The breath arrives in the space that you are occupying and that you're with. And each time you release the breath, you drop deeper into your center, that space between the lungs. To start with, it might be a to and from. It might be a, a movement of the mind that um, occupies space first and then travels with the release of the breath back to the heart. But after a time, you can sort of stay in your heart and be also from there, be with space as the breath arrives. Until you feel yourself to be living within, but present to without. So here we are, in, ourse in ourselves, and that's the beginning. The next place to go is not to stay um, within, because um, the sensation of within is a result of how you have arrived already, how you've already organized things. And rather than chasing around those sensations and adjusting within, the next place to go is where you are going to get support from. So if you're still in this calm relationship to space and you found your center from it, the next place to take your attention with the release of the breath, and by attention I mean physical attention, as in you engage. So you let the breath come in, uh, in your center, now that you're there. And when you release, you release it to your contact. You drop it. And you drop into where you meet the earth. And if your hands are anchored, anchored your head onto the ground, then hopefully the head will have relaxed. And from within, you meet the space that you meet the contact behind the head with the release of the breath. There are physiological changes that go with that, including a um, the, the head being released back as the breath empties means that the thoracic spine is also being moved by the release of the breath. So that's a physiological detail. I don't really need to get wrapped up in it. But what we're doing is we're trying to take our attention from this place within that we've arrived in to how we support ourselves. The contact we make. And I started with the head. From that space within, from the space within the hands, you can drop back through the wings and the shoulders from the elbows as well. And if you want a deeper sensation of that, then you can associate that release back through your shoulders with the hands detaching from the head. So. You once again, you get involved a little bit with space through your hands. The breath is something that happens within. The release of the breath is something that happens in relationship to ground underneath the head and shoulders. It's your contact. It's also happening if your head's dropping back and your base of the spine is dropping back. So get involved there as well. And if you get involved there, you might be motivated to get involved with the contact you make with the feet. The breath arrives within, so you release effort and allow the breath to arrive within. And then you return with the release of the breath 
to your contact. And my suggestion is you try and kind of, you get involved with making it about equal. And you know, most of you that involves some effort through your legs and feet. Um, the hands moving away from you is the equivalent effort for the head and shoulders. So you return to within to breathe. And then as you release the breath, you, you relate to your contact. So now we're building, having found a relationship from space back to our centers, we are now building a relationship between our center and the earth beneath us. And when that has begun, and particularly if your relationship to the earth is taking you into space, taking you into a physical engagement with space, so in the arms it will be through the hands, as well as your perception, through the hands and wrists, possibly the forearms, whilst the shoulders continue to anchor into the ground. And in the uh, lower body, as you release the breath and get involved with your touch, the relationship to space will be a little bit in front of the knees in order to find your feet on the ground. Every inhale returning to the center, every exhale returning to the earth and the space that you occupy. We're not there yet, we're nearly there. So in this case you're with your what is within as you breathe in and you're with your environment as you release the breath. Last part to start to get a sense of things is if having released the breath and engaged with earth and space if you can meet earth and space to breathe, you will be, be still in your center. And then the subsequent release back from your engagement with earth and space will be to that center. As your expansion into earth and space develops. Now, you're in a position to know what the body wants. Now you can listen. Not think about, you can listen. Because you're in your body, you're in the breath, you're on this planet and relating to this space. As you breathe and as you release the breath. So there's a steadiness of relationship that allows you to discern. So if you're making things about equal, you can notice. There might be a desire to move somewhere. For, for me, I'm noticing a, something around the lower back that wants to feel something different. So I'm going to stay in this centered relationship to earth and space as I both engage with earth and space to breathe and engage with earth and space to release the breath remaining in my center. So I'm going to try sending my knees further away from me into the space that the knees are touching. So I can expand the sense of how I'm meeting space to breathe into the space behind the back of my waist, space behind the back of my legs. And obviously my, t my hands and my feet will be involved with that. My 
shoulders, the spine itself. And then when I return to my center with the release of the breath, I, it's not I detach from my center, I just engage with space from that center. And then when I release the breath back to, to the center from touching space, as a suitable inward release through my bones, inward release through my bones and my structure, that has changed the feeling around my lumbar spine. It's, it's, it feels integrated, it feels breathing, it feels part of me. The space behind that area of me is as useful as the space in front of my knees, or in front of my hands and wrists. So I can arrive in that space as much as anywhere else as I stay in my centre and feel supported and then subsequent release from all directions through my bones brings me into a movement sourced in an opening from my centre and the lumbar spine is changing, the core of my body is responding more deeply. I'm recognising some structural things that are and I'll, I'll hijack later to teach, you know. So the ribs are doing something interesting. But if I separate myself from this whole body engagement, whole person engagement from with earth and space, if I separate myself from that to go into the details, I lose the practice that is changing the sensation, you see. So I can continue to discern as long as I keep my attention and intention appropriately there. That's what I do, Mark. <laughs> um, that's my methodology for how to, how to um, be guided from within. Be, um, because within is a confusing place if it's being a, if it's being assessed by the thinking mind. Uh, before I started, I didn't know my lumbers needed that, he, he, and until I got to a place of kind of whole relationship from from within to everything around me, um, it was hidden from me. Uh, I could have worked it out intellectually from the sensations and all the rest of it. But um, the actual solution was staying in that whole relationship to all that is as I practice. You know, isn't that the purpose of yoga anyway? To become integrated with all that is, to become one with. And, um, you know, the, the yoga texts talk about the, the movements of the mind becoming still so that you can experience that, so that the witness can experience that union. And, um, wow, you can do it. You can do it with your body. Your body is there ready and willing to take part in this experiment if the, the thinking mind can set itself the task of creating the right conditions for that to happen. And um, that's where my methodology has arisen from, is, is with that intent of how, how to get there, you know, how to become guided by, from within. And for me, that's how it shaped my practice. For, for, for you, or who, whoever is watching, you won't necessarily have the same outcome. You might get into this whole body, person, centered relationship to earth and space and decide to fly up into a headstand or a handstand or something to explore, to play, to enjoy, to celebrate, you know? And if that action leaves you centered and in relationship to all that is, wow! <laughs> so, yeah, anyway, I hope that was Interesting. I loved it. I've really enjoyed myself just then. I hope, I hope um, following me helped as well. So, uh, yes, this is the bit where I, I say what I've got, what I've got going on. Um, yes, 
yeah, uh, my comprehensive intermediate pranayama course is up and running f just for half price, 47 pounds um, for the whole thing. There are, there are six course uh, workshops um, between 30 minutes and 40, 40 minutes, I think. Between 20 and 40 minutes, I think the workshops are. And there's a bonus one on a, on a different version of a particular breath, um, just for sort of uh, purposes of completing the picture. And there's also nine individual five, ten minute guided practice sessions on individual pranayamas. So there's a course process that you can dive into on a maybe a weekly basis or something where, where you do one for a week. And then there's individual pranayamas that you can mix and match as you like. Um, you know, pick the one that you enjoy best. Um, or, you know, try them out see how it goes. If you get lost and you want to um, understand it better, uh, you know, if, if some of them you don't like for whatever reason, um, uh, go back to them when, you, when you're ready, you know. But um, I would do the course part to get a, um, a ground up embodied sense of what the whole thing is about because uh, the, the, the course side of things sort of builds things up from, um, yeah, from the ground up and alludes to some of the nature of what these pranayamas are for and, and how they work on a mechanical level and physiological level and other things, uh, as well as uh, emotional. And um, yeah, so, so you can mix and match, you see. Uh, it's, got, it's got five, ten minutes guided sessions for those of you who want to just have some guided practice. And then there's a course part for those of you who really want to go into the depth of it and get more out of the same practice. So that, that, that's up and ready, and, and you can just buy that. It's an online course, so. And, uh, yeah, half price for my birthday month. Um, uh, later today, in half an hour, I've got my uh, Tuesday morning class, 75 minutes gentle guided practice with 50, 10, 15 minutes deep relaxation at the end. There's so another one this evening at 6.30, and tomorrow morning at 11. Uh, welcome to all. Drop in, £12. Um, if you want to uh, make it cheaper, you can have a view only place by applying the coupon code view only um, with a dash in the middle, and uh, that's, that's that that makes it half price. And uh, but to, you need to not be on screen for that because otherwise it's not fair for the others. So on my birthday itself, Saturday, May the 9th, I've been invited to teach uh, an ongoing um, training day, CPD or o o -T -G o -G -T, whatever it's called, for Yoga Scotland. Um, they, they liked the title that I offered the British Wheel, which um, actually went down rather well. It was a, it was a superb workshop. Uh, change perspective, transform practice. It's about um, uh, how to let go of fixed mental impressions and that sort of thing in order to to progress in practice, you know, all, all the stuff basically that we learn um, as we begin yoga, as useful as it all is and seems at the time, um, those things that we've learned have become fixed mental impressions, so we impose those things that we've learned on our practice, and the result is we're no longer doing yoga, because we're, we're doing something habitual, something imposed, something learned. While we were learning it was wonderful, because it was something new and we were present to it, so we were in communion. Um, so anyway, that's the, that's the theory <laughs> behind that workshop, and um, hopefully it will go as well as the last one. You, you book that one with Yoga Scotland directly. Um, I think it's £45 pounds for, the, for the day for a Yoga Scotland um, member. Uh, other things I've got going on, well, uh, I've got my uh, core intelligence course still running, but um, all, all of my online courses you can uh, you can't take, you can't join that live now because it's it's running live and we're halfway through, but you can sign up for the recorded version and get the same benefits. There's there's um, there's a half price version that doesn't come with the one to ones for those that just want to explore it in their own time, and there's um, and the the full versions come with three one to ones, um, so that I can guide you through any blips and confusions over, uh, as you go through the recorded sessions. Uh, other than that, the Saturday after I've, I've not advertised it on my on my list here, but Saturday after I've got another one of my two-hour morning Saturday retreats, which you can book. Um, that will be the eight, no, the fifteenth, uh, is it? Yeah, 
Saturday the 15th, no 16th, sorry. Um, Saturday the 16th of May. Uh, what else? Uh, yeah, otherwise it's one-to-ones. Book a, book a free 15 minute if you've, if you've not worked with me before, if you want some advice on something. And more people are taking that up now and quite, I'm quite happy to help as much as I can in the 15 minutes. Usually I get to give you the idea of how to solve your issue for yourself. Um, uh, rarely in 15 minutes do I get time to <laughs> guide you in practice. Uh, but um, if you know, it gives you gives you an, it gives you a clue, it gives you um, a light at the end of the tunnel. If there is an issue for you that um, uh, you, you're constantly battling with, and um, it doesn't have to be that. If you just want, uh, if what you want is to find that depth, you know, and um, there might be a posture that is eluding you that will help you find it, because uh, those those things that are difficult, they contain the gold. I promise you, they really do. If, if something's difficult for you, that's the resolving your uh, relationships to make that thing that seems difficult to make that become easy, as in it has ease. If you work that one out, you work it, you're going to work out something fundamental. So um, uh, it, it's it's kind of my area. It's uh, it's it's quite contentious. It's not. It doesn't make me very popular. <laughs> um, it hasn't made me very popular in the past, but. Um, because uh, there's no fear around approaching difficult things and, and most uh, difficult areas of the body and most people would rather practice sort of um, avoiding those things so they don't notice, so they don't feel it, so they feel like they're good at what they're doing. But um, as uh, if there is a fundamental thing going on, it will keep coming up and it will keep showing itself and it will, it will refer to other places in the body if you manage to ignore it for long enough and hide it. Um, so you know it will come around some point, and the the further down the line it is, the bigger the journey, but the bigger the transformation if you can resolve it. So, and it's kind of my speciality. I can't do it in 15 minutes. I can give you the idea, but I can, um, but I so you can, you know, get your head around it and sit and apply the idea to your own practice. Uh, by definition, you won't know how to do that because if you did, you'd already be doing it. But, um, you know, if you've got the idea, you can begin and you can start to open to other ways of doing things that might make it possible for you to resolve the, the, uh, that thing you've been living with for however long it is. Okay, uh, so get in touch. Get, book a free one if you've not worked with me before. And uh, if you want some direct guidance, then, um, yeah, I, I'm quite happy to help of course it's my living <laughs> so um yeah other than that um all's well in the world for me um and i hope it is for you too yes i uh yes have a lovely week and um i shall see you same time same place for your for next week's yoga solutions live much love to you all bye now